we don't just have the ability to shut down the, the, the treatment process for a matter of hours or days. We have the very serious potential of damaging physical equipment that's going to take weeks or months to replace, crippling the water system for a very long time. And this is a very bad thing in a large population center. Hello and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions and we're working our way through the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we use the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of two security postures at a hypothetical water treatment plant. One of the security postures is basically vintage 2013 best practice 2013, all of the, the software protections that were recommended back then. The second security posture is that same software-based comprehensive security posture with one addition, and that is a unidirectional security gateway replacing the ITOT firewall. The gateway is now the only connection between the industrial network and the IT network. We are comparing the strength of these two security programs by working through the 20 attacks and answering the question, does each of these two security programs reliably defeat the attack in question? Today's attack is a more sophisticated Ukrainian attack. So in the, the original, you know, the attack number six, the Ukraine attack, we were looking at a set of hacktivists, maybe two hacktivists who had it in for the city, the citizens, or the water treatment utility. In this attack, we're going to postulate a nation state. It might be a security agency, it might be a military, but they have resources that our hypothetical hacktivists in the previous scenario did not. So in this scenario, um, the attackers again steal credentials, log into the IT network. Once in the IT network, they find a way or they invent a way to defeat the jump host, the two-factor authentication on the jump host. Um, they might find vulnerabilities in the, the two-factor authentication system. They might find a vulnerability in the jump host and exploit it independent of the two-factor system. They might hijack a remote desktop session by building custom malware and planting it on remote technicians who use the jump host to log in, hijack one or more of their sessions. Um, they might find other ways to do this. There's ways to defeat multi-factor. Once they're in the industrial network, I'm postulating in this scenario that they already have the knowledge of how the water treatment plant works, and they've decided to target the equipment. They want to cause equipment damage, in addition to all of the collateral damage with, with boil water advisories and whatnot. To cause equipment damage, they target the protective relays. Protective relays are dedicated computers, much like PLCs. They have one job. Their job is to protect equipment, usually from electrical or sometimes from other kinds of physical faults, maybe overheating, maybe over torque. Um, but they target the protective relays and change the configurations in the relays so that the relays no longer do anything. A relay that used to say if the phase angle of power coming into a motor differs from the phase of the motor by more than 10 degrees, which is generating a lot of physical stress on the motor, trip the power and protect the motor. Well, they would change the configuration of the relay to say if it's, you know, if it is any more than 360 degrees out of phase, then trip to power. And of course, it'll never be more than 360 degrees out of phase. That's as out of phase as you can get. And so it'll never trip. And now if they can cause a condition that is dangerous to the equipment, the relays no longer protect the equipment. And again, these people in this scenario we're postulating understand the physical process, they understand the equipment, and they can cause scenarios electrically or physically that damage the equipment. So in terms of sophistication, this is a very sophisticated adversary. They can invent tools to bypass two-factor authentication, or they may have them in their pocket already. They understand the physical process and they can bring about circumstances that are damaging to equipment. They already understand how to do that. And they understand how to disable the protective relays that would normally protect the equipment from those damaging conditions. You might ask, um, how is this different from the Ukraine attack? Um, there were in fact two Ukraine attacks, and the second one is much less well uh, widely known than the first. The first was the uh, a hacktivist class attack, but probably a nation state because there were so many people involved. The second one 
much less is known about it. I don't personally even know if the lights went out as a result of it. But the investigators who went in after the fact um, found a malware toolkit uh, that showed a lot of sophistication, showed a serious investment in developing state-of-the-art attack tools. And one of the capabilities of this malware toolkit was targeting protective relays. And so this is the inspiration for the, uh, you know, attack number seven in the, in the top 20 white paper. In terms of consequences, this is a very serious attack. Uh, we not only have the potential to release untreated water into the distribution system and, and make lots of people sick, we not only have the ability to release toxic amounts of additives like fluoride or chlorine into the system uh, to again make people sick. We don't just have the ability to shut down the, the, the treatment process for a matter of hours or days. We have the very serious potential of damaging physical equipment that's going to take weeks or months to replace, uh, crippling the water system for a very long time. And this is a very bad thing in a large population center. You need clean water in a city of, of a few million people or you know things just don't work i mean toilets don't flush not to mention that people don't have drinking water so you have a, a sanitation crisis as well as a, a drinking water crisis how do our security postures our two different programs uh fare in the face of this class of attack well the 2013 program the software-based program these people know how to defeat software defenses. They defeated the two-factor authentication on the, uh, on the jump host. They defeated the configuration of the protective relays. They would be executed, taking advantage of zero-day vulnerabilities, not necessarily vulnerabilities that we've patched. They would be uh, you know, hijacking sessions. They might even be breaking crypto systems. Who knows? And so there is nothing in the 2013 security posture that can reliably defeat this class of attack. In the unidirectionally protected scenario, what do we have? Well, again, this is a remote adversary. They're coming from the internet into the IT network and trying to find a way into the industrial control system. In the unidirectionally protected scenario, um, there's only one way to get into the control system, and that's through the unidirectional gateway. And again, you can't do that. The gateway is physically able to send information out. It cannot send attack information like mouse movements or passwords in to the protected network. And any kind of remote access, again, the most common kind of remote access for unidirectionally protected networks is remote screen view, where you have a person on the inside moving the mouse, typing on the keyword, talking to an expert on the outside. There's no way someone on the inside is going to take action that is going to damage the physical equipment. They understand the physical process as well. And so there is no way for this class of adversary to remotely impair the industrial network. And so the unidirectionally protected security posture does reliably defeat this class of adversary. So let's bring up our scorecard and have a look at how we're doing. As you can see, the unidirectionally protected security posture is pulling ahead of it. That's what I had for you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Industrial Security Institute. Don't forget to download the white paper from the Waterfall website if you want to learn more. The top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. And uh, you stayed to the end of the episode. Give us a like and a subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>